Welcome to India Market Open. Uh, there's lots to cover in early trade, lots of cues that we're getting in from the world markets. Global equity markets are down, crude is up. Local cues also quite a few regard with regard to NSC, cement price hike, auto sales behind us. It's a busy morning, guys. It's a busy morning. So much to talk about, so much to uh, cover. But uh, suffice to say, uh, the global cues are not positive this yeah, morning. It's a and, tough and, one. And maybe Intel and Tesla are symptomatic of what the world is going through right now. Absolutely. Intel, <laughs> Tesla, BYD. So a lot to cover. lot to cover. Let's begin by just telling you uh, what's been happening overnight. So the Dow is down nearly 400 points. Um, at one point, nearly 500 points down. So uh, it's a combination of perhaps uh, taking some profits off the table. Remember, Q1 was excellent for the U.S. markets. Maybe you're seeing that. A combination of nervousness, at least, because you have an economy that's growing strong and inflation, which is not close enough to the 2% mark that the Fed wants. So then now the question is, will June really be the first rate cut? And you're seeing that play out in what we saw in the markets uh, overnight. Niraj was talking about Tesla, and that was the big story in a sense. 5% down on Tesla because uh, their first quarter numbers have seen, or deliveries actually, have seen an 8% drop uh, year on year. And after those poor Q1 numbers, you saw sentiment soar. On the other hand, now look at this. Equities are down. Bond yields are hardening. So you saw the 10-year at one point even hit the 4.4% mark. It's about 4.35%. Um, eventually, but you're seeing that trend go upwards. Not too much respite if you look at other factors like crude, and we'll be having a more detailed conversation in a bit as well, but suffice to say that crude prices have jumped, uh, and um, a couple of geopolitical factors. So remember yesterday we talked about the uh, Iranian embassy in Damascus being hit by a missile strike. As expected, Iran says they think Israel did it and that they're going to hit back. So is that going to be the start of a geopolitical conflagration. Now, to make matters worse, a Ukrainian drone has taken out one of the biggest Russian um, oil fields uh, overnight as well, So, which is why you're seeing crude prices showing that tension. And of course, we'll come to more detail. But I just, there's so many factors today. Uh, so crude is up. Gold has hit another high. Bitcoin has crashed about 5%. So you have that whole picture coming. And just look at what's happened to Asia this morning as well. Um, as you've seen a sharp decline. And again, apart from all the other factors, it's the EV pain as well, where you have Tesla and a BYD. BYD, in fact, one of the largest uh, Chinese EV makers has seen a 45, 46% drop in their numbers just quarter on quarter. So that EV story souring is an interesting one. Indeed, just before we talk about EV, a quick mention on crude, uh, Tamana, you've got the OPEC class meeting today as well. So while yeah. nothing is expected to remain a change in terms of supply cuts or supply addition, uh, it'd be interesting to see what the commentary really is for those guys. And another interesting headline that I caught, and I want to talk very quickly mention and to talk to you guys about it, China and Hong Kong have lost $5 trillion in three years, which is more than the market cap of India. I mean, that, and that market is still standing, right? So that's an exciting, uh, uh, you know, statement I read. It was an interesting headline, so just thought I'd bring it up for our viewers. That's yeah. the kind of significant loss China has gone through, and but it continues to stand. But I believe you've got Vandana Hari. Yeah. Should we very yeah. quickly go across to Vandana and ask her uh, what's really driving crude? Vandana Hari, founder and CEO at Vandana Insights, joins in. Uh, Vandana, good morning, good evening. Uh, a quick one from my side. Uh, Crude has been on an upward trajectory for the last, uh, from the start of this year, really. It's up 6%. It was up 6% in March, inching every bit closer to $90 a barrel. Now, in your opinion, what is this? Is this a geopolitical stress that we are seeing in, uh, you know, Israel, Iran, that equation? Or do you think that an improvement in demand, anticipation of that, is really driving crude higher? So is it a supply problem, or is it improved demand situation that's supporting crude? Vandana, can you hear me? No. OK. Vandana, can you hear us? Okay. No, okay. I think we'll have to wait yeah, for, we'll have to wait wait for on that. to come in. By the way, just just before we talk on to all the other things, just uh, cross fingers for and prayers for uh, people in Taiwan, and yeah. hopefully it doesn't morph into something even big in terms of a tsunami hitting some of the other coasts and uh, damaging more lives. So that is one prayer um, out there for sure. 
but we have the other aspect is of course and hopefully we'll get one now soon but what it does um, mean in terms of uh, one crude doing what it is doing but at the other end uh, just a bit of uh, anomaly from risk assets perspective gold. because we're seeing gold do what yeah. it is doing we're seeing yields inch up yeah. quite substantially and does that hurt uh, us meaningfully or risk assets meaningfully yeah. is the other key question. Most yeah. people were expecting gold to sell off and it's not just stabilized but it's moving higher. So yeah. well, I think Vandana is back. Vandana, uh, very quickly, crude has been on an upward trajectory from the start of this year. 6% gains in March, 10% higher from Jan this year. Uh, what do you think this is? Do you think this is an interim gain on back of, uh, uh, you know, reduction in supply on back of geo? Okay, I believe we are still <laughs> waiting on Vandana. But yes, talking about gold, What's happening in gold it's, is, I mean, Indians, I'm guessing, are happy. SGB is getting oversubscribed, as it's always. It's insane. You know, we did, we did a Twitter poll a few days ago, and I don't know if you saw it. If you didn't, please go to the NDTV profit handle. We did a Twitter poll that uh, what will do better, and we gave an option of asset classes. And uh, at least when I clicked, uh, gold had uh, the highest in that list. So gold is definitely going to be the story. Um, so we'll try and get more details for you on what's happening with crude prices. But suffice to say, that's going to weigh on the markets today. And uh, we should perhaps look at what the other factors are, Neeraj, because uh, global queues are definitely not positive. Um, Indian markets, uh, I wouldn't even say closed down. It was flat to negative yesterday. But the sentiment didn't seem like it was holding up from what we saw on the 1st of April. Yeah, most certainly. Um, you know, and um, I, one, just, just the sense of yesterday's movers seems to suggest that there was a lot of uh, positive bias for things getting discounted in a jiffy. <coughs> so uh, if, if you just look at what the index did yesterday, deceptive so, but look at what movers did. So the key movers in yesterday's session, Tata consumers, suddenly people find favor for FMCG. m and auto numbers getting rewarded. AB Capital, a brokerage note, uh, talking about a uh, doubling in three years and suddenly an underperforming stock. Of course, the AB group was in focus, uh, but the stock getting up 10%. Symphony, well, um, we know it's going to be a hot summer, but suddenly out there, people are seeing that as if there's no tomorrow, uh, take a stock up 10%. Oil India, uh, discounting oil. Sale, discounting the China data. So things got discounted very, very quickly uh, in trade the last two or three sessions. Almost a bit of a left out feeling, but today, Tamana is right, skittish global queues, higher crude, do make the risk reward unattractive for leveraged longs. Now, you could be buying into stocks uh, based on bottom of research that's separate, but leveraged longs, maybe for an intraday or a one day, two day basis, maybe the risk reward isn't the most attractive. Keep in mind, traders are betting at a very wide range for the current month. Of course, it's the start of the series and maybe that is why it also has an impact, but just look at the call and the put data, puts at 22,000, calls at 23,000. So it's a very wide range in which uh, this is uh, being done. So that's the other aspect uh, to focus on uh, as far as um, uh, option support or option resistances are concerned. Sectors that may be focused on, pharma and metals, uh, to my mind, certainly stand up there. So somehow the metal trade has come back very, very strongly based on the China data. There is a I think there is a Macquarie note today which speaks about how the week on week property registration data in China is also looking up. So metals certainly remain in the fray. And pharma guys remains in the fray. I mean, we'll talk about it in the stocks to watch piece as well, but just the fact that there is a $5 billion vision of quality sourcing unveiled by the US, you would argue that uh, emerging markets like China and India, but I would argue from an Indian perspective, India mm. looking at the generic exporters, looking very, I'd rather, looking at very good prospects as a result of this. If this does turn out to be true and if Indian companies manage to find a foothold there, that's a large bill out there over the course of the next five years uh, waiting to be ticked off. Yeah, absolutely. I think the pharma space has uh, come to life and heated up in the last uh, couple of months specifically and uh, as a trend. And of course, we'll have to dig data and get you the numbers to back this. So it's not a claim I'm making off the top of my head. But uh, the kind of strictures from the US FDA, et cetera, have been coming off. That quality piece has been improving consistently. There was a time when that was the biggest trigger for pharma stocks and not necessarily perhaps. But there's a whole lot of stocks to talk about today as well, Samina. There are. So yeah, just a quick one on the FNO data as well. So while we did make record highs of 22,525, it's uh, 
aggressive open interest addition was seen at levels of 20 to 1500 so what this really means is while you might have in like Neeraj said the next one or two days uh, you know could see a little bit of consolidation the medium term uh, trend mm. remains positive if 20 to 1300 remains a key level of support to watch out for on the nifty so if you do break out about that continue to trade about 22,500 uh, 22,700 traders believe cannot be ruled out at this stage so long still intact uh, interim consolidation is what we are currently eyeing uh, well there will be sectors to watch out for well pharma will be one of them so will metals this morning you've had a bunch of metal companies reporting uh, best production once ever and I'll start with MOIL if I can pull that one up on the screen the stock was fairly active over the last few days of trade uh, they've recorded the best ever production at 17.5 lakh metric tons which is up 35 percent year on year they also have record sales for the month to come in, come in at 15.3 uh, lakh metric tons up 30 percent YOI so great numbers there the stock should see a bump up and of course uh, let's not forget that the dollar is looking a little subdued this morning so that could be another factor that could keep metals in focus uh, you also have Nalco which has achieved its highest ever aluminium bauxite production in FI 23-24 and you've got Hindustan Zinc now those numbers uh, not uh, looking as great as it did for Nalco and Moil. Hindustan Zilk's mined metal output is marginally down, and but it's up quarter on quarter by 11%, but there's a marginal downtick year on year on that number. Refined metal production is up 6% quarter on quarter and 1% YOY. This one, of course, had seen a pretty big move in trade yesterday. Uh, it be uh, interesting to see how this plays out in today's day of trade. Well, a quick other one, GSW Energy, this is an update. The board has approved fundraising plans of about 5,000 crores via QIP and the floor price is set at 510 rupees. The stock had seen a big move in trade yesterday, potentially on back of uh, news of this fundraising approval coming through. But again, could be seeing a downtick on back of a big discount to yesterday's close. So uh, while everyone's calling this a funding winter, I'm not sure how that is because all these QIPs, fundraising listings funding are getting winter, snapped funding, up. Funding winter is for the startup. Uh, funding, <laughs> funding winter is in Bangalore. Uh, uh, not for, in Mumbai. Not yeah. in Mumbai. Not in Mumbai. And uh, I, I think because that whole cycle has is slowing down perhaps now. run its course uh, where you could just ask for anything on a great idea in a coffee shop and then yeah, someone yeah. wrote a check. I mean, there were times tech companies were going at 20x. Yeah, yeah. You know, Eans. now you get 7, 8x, so, you're still so good. Eans now it's about companies that. where you can see yeah. what they're going to make. So old infra uh, and, uh, you know, old economy uh, in vogue. But yeah, a couple of other stocks uh, that uh, on my radar, Anupam Rasayan, is uh, one that I wanted to talk about. They've signed an LOI with a Japanese multinational company with an aggregate value of about 743 crores over seven years. They're going to be supplying two advanced intermediates using fluorination chemistry. Now, as my colleague Varsha explained this with a lot of enthusiasm, this particular chemical that they're going to be making, they will be the first company in India to make these key molecules. It's a high margin business. Uh, which is why you might see a positive outlook on Anupam Rasayan today. And their supply commences, um, uh, you know, from FY2425. So that's one uh, to watch out for. Suntech Reality is another one because uh, we've been talking about uh, the reality boom in advance. But is a standing structure in a key commercial area really able to get that yield? And which is why I found the Suntech Reality story interesting. So they have uh, this premium building at uh, BKC, which they have leased out to Bennett Coleman. And uh, the revenue is about 2,000 crores to be generated over 29 years. So till FY26, that works out to about 140 odd crores, and then it moves out to uh, 300 crores per year in terms of yield. Uh, so a rental yield at this level shows, uh, you know, some real green shoots in commercial real estate as well on ground. Um, I would say evidence of that. Uh, cement stocks was the other one. So now you had some reaction yesterday as well, but I would look at uh, some of those cement counters, uh, ACC, Ultratech, uh, Ramco, Sri Cement, your entire lot. So they have hiked prices and the price hikes are fairly significant. And they come at a time when it was expected cement uh, companies would not be able to hike prices ahead of elections, but they have. The price hikes are also uh, pretty uh, decent, 30 rupees a bag in Karnataka. We'll just pull up that chart for you. Look at uh, 
Tamil Nadu, 50 to 80 rupees a bag. So you might see a follow-on reaction there as well today. Just yeah, uh, very just quickly, Neeraj, I want to comment on Suntech Realty. So while this is great for them, it also is makes media sound like it's in a good space. You make a 2,000 crore rupee commitment for 29 years? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. absolutely. But, is, absolutely. So but, but yeah, they're, perhaps they're moving from, uh, um, if you know Bombay, in those of you know Bombay, they're moving perhaps from old Mumbai, VT, to BKC. So that's another level of move. But yeah, yeah. I was the, the, the annual mat comes to about 50, 60 crores for that headquarters. So, Still uh, a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, age-old company believes it will last for the another 100 years, which they very well could. I mean, who's to challenge uh, the newspaper business there? So, yeah, pretty interesting uh, yeah. there. But no, on cement, uh, interesting, Tamanna was talking about it. Yesterday's trade was interesting on cement. Look at the prize OI action in some of these. So, Ramco, Dalmia, India Cements, very strong prize wall price and OI build up there. So long formation seen in cement already. So pretty interesting that uh, somebody had a whiff, somebody did this, and maybe there could be more in store as well. So watch out for cement yeah, stocks yeah. in this session. You know, I just, just to add to that, I was seeing an, uh, a note, I won't name the brokerage, from I think 48 hours ago saying that cement looking tough because they're unlikely to raise prices. Mm. <laughs> so. Yeah, so shouldn't, sure. be so shouldn't be subscribing to that group. Yeah. As I'm not naming it? any names, but yeah. yeah. Okay, and, and some more stocks just very quickly. Uh, before, I think we'll, we'll probably get in um, a word from Vandana Hari in a moment from now. But uh, pharma stocks could be in focus today, like we were saying. Uh, U.S. government has laid out a vision for a multi-billion dollar pharma sourcing plan uh, over multiple years. And therefore, uh, the likes of Sun Pharma, uh, Dr. Reddy's, Lupin, Aurobindo, all of these could be in focus today. Watch out for the CDMO companies as well, the likes of DVs, etc. They could all be in focus because of this. In case there is a reaction, you would know. You should know why that is happening. Remember yesterday, some of these stocks, especially the CDMO players, were very active. JSW Energy Board has approved a fundraise of 5,000 crores via QIP at a floor price of 510. Um, remember, the floor price did not necessarily be the price at which the deed is done. At times, it happens at a discount. Work hard did. But still, the stocks jump up if the appetite is good. 5,000 crores is a large one. Let's see how JSW Energy reacts today. The other one is Anant Raj Industries. And this could be very interesting simply because uh, amongst everything else that they are doing, it's, it's still a small cap company, but it's set up a meeting. Or Capital International, one of the biggest FIIs for India at least, um, they are meeting Anant Raj. And I think somehow something tells me this doesn't mean that they're going to invest by the way but because this is happening i dare say you could see a bit of a reaction in in anantaraj industries today so do watch out for this one as well i don't know how sona blw reacts to be honest guys um, but uh, they've got an approval for a second hub under pli maybe that stock reacts but could be interesting